Good morning to everyone and welcome to God's house. How are you doing this morning? I hear all kinds of answers. Most of you, I feel that you say, I'm doing well. So glad to see you here in the sanctuary, folks who are worshiping at home. Glad to know you are there and there are some people in the parish house. This is God's day and this is Sunday and this is Sabbath to come together and to worship. And let's go ahead and take a look around this beautiful sanctuary now. We have done some work here. Have you noticed that? New paint and uh, new ceiling and uh, many things new. Of course, the building itself is still what it is, obviously, but the, uh, it looks beautiful. So we are so thankful to you all, church family and trustees and everyone who's been working on this uh, renovation that uh, we are, we got to this point that we are able to come to church this Sunday. On uh, Pentecost Sunday, we are going to be celebrating big time. So be ready for that. We are going to uh, be celebrating, of course, Pentecost is, is the church's birthday. One thing, so it's right timing. But then we've been through a lot now this spring, uh, past year on renovations and this pandemic. And it's time to celebrate. So uh, Pentecost two weeks from today is again another moment opportunity for us to to celebrate so uh, be sure to know that but today we are here to worship to express our gratitude to our lord we are also here to uh, celebrate our many graduates some of them graduated from high school and some even from college so this is something we are going to do today so glad you are here glad to hear voices children's voices here how many children we have here all around? We have little ones and big ones. And so children, let's show appreciation to our children. Good to have children here this morning. So let's pray together. Let's bring our hearts together and praise together. And then we uh, welcome the Lord to worship with us. Dear Heavenly Father, in Christ's name, we have come together this morning. Lord, this is a beautiful morning to be in your presence. To, bring, to be in this beautiful sanctuary, renewed sanctuary, where we can worship and where our brothers and sisters before us be worshiping through decades, over 100 years in this place. So Lord, we are here for you and we know you are here for us. Come Holy Spirit, come upon this worshiping community. Help us to hear, Lord, from you and help us to see your glory. In Jesus' wonderful name, we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Emily. The words to the song that she was playing are, How He Loves. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Today we're going to be hearing about and, and uh, thinking about how our faith is essential. And some things that are essential to our faith are being able to stand on the promises that God gives us. So our first song today reminds us of that. So I invite you to please stand and sing together, Standing on the Promises. This next hymn is, a, is what is referred to as a modern-day hymn. It's, a, it's been written more recently than most of the hymns in our hymn book. And to me, it is one that summarizes the whole message, what Christ is all about, what he came to earth to do, and how he saves us. So let us sing together, In Christ Alone.
turn and greet each other with the sign of Christ's peace. And to those of you who are worshiping with us at home, we extend the peace of Christ to you and your families. So glad you could join us, even if it's virtually. Um, we appreciate you being here. You may be seated. So it's time for our children's message. So I believe the children can come down and sit in front. And while they're doing that, let us sing, Jesus Loves Me. Jesus loves me, this I know. I thought it meant that the mute button was either on or off instead of on or mute. I got you. All right. I thought the opposite. This is my number one sound band. Hi. I do the slidey slidey. I don't do the talky talky. Um, all right. I'll try it again. Hi, everybody. I'm Mr. Ben. It's good to see you guys. Um, so I have, a, I have some questions. I have decided. Um, that I am going to be a superhero. Um, so if that's okay, um, I'm going to be a superhero. So I thought I would ask you guys some advice. What, does it, what do I need to do to be a superhero? Train. I should train, okay? I need you to stop. Um, yeah, Eli? Don't do bad things, so don't be a villain. I got you. Wait a second, what do you mean I need to train? I thought I looked pretty, I thought I was ready. Okay, okay. And I should keep training. You should, okay, yeah? What else? Um, you need a costume. A costume, I agree. I agree. Yeah? I need to find crime before the police get there. What do I do with this crime? I stop the crime. Okay, well, so... So first of all, I got, I got, I got a cape. That's really my cape. So um, I'm gonna put on, put on this cape. And thank you. Well, I didn't. I, Batman is lending it to me, but he said I couldn't use his his like symbol. So um, um, I got a cape, um, and I got this mask here. Totally fits. It totally fits. Um, so, and then I got I got this measuring tape. Um, and so that way, if I need to like measure things really fast, I can. And I'm gonna put it on my belt, like Batman used to have, like a utility belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and this this is like my uh, when you gotta like swing from things. I could just and I can put this to my belt too. It's sort of like a grappling hook. Right now, it's just like a string, but I, the, the grappling, it's on order from Amazon. Um, it's on back order. All right, so I am, I'm a superhero, right? I got the costume. I've done the training. Um, so what do I need to do? What else do I need? Well, Batman doesn't have superpowers. I think I've done. I think I've done everything except what Sawyer said. I think I need to. I have to find crime and make it stop, and that's that's kind of that's kind of the idea today. So um, today the adults are going to read about um, this lady named Lydia, and Lydia was a good friend of Paul's, and Paul talked to her and told her about Jesus, 
And then she decided that she wanted to be a follower of Jesus. And so she had faith. Um, she had faith in Jesus and in, uh, and in the, the power of Jesus and the spirit of Jesus. But then she went uh, and took the next step. She said to Paul, hey, Paul, do you have a place to stay tonight? And that's exactly what Paul said. He said, no. Um, and Lydia said, I have plenty of space. My family won't mind. Um, please come and stay with us tonight. Um, stay with us until you need to move on to the next place. And so she had faith, and then she took the next step, and she took her faith, and she did something with it. She went out, and she helped people, and she used the power that God gave her and the spirit that God gave her to help other people. And so it, it's one thing to, to have the cape and to have um, the mask and to look, look the look, but you've also got to walk the walk. You've got to do um, what God asked us to do. Um, <laughs> it would help, wouldn't it? Um, all right, so <laughs> um, let's pray that God um, gives us the strength and the focus to do these things. Okay, let's bow our heads and close our eyes and fold our hands. Father God, thank you so much for these children. Thank you so much for the faith that you have given us. Thank you for the spirit that you sent to us. Lord, give us the strength each day to use that spirit and the gifts that you've given us to do your work in this world. We love you, Lord. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, let's head off to Kids Church, all right? All right, let's show our appreciation to children and Ben. Ben did, <laughs> ben did decent job too this morning. So uh, now it's time to pray for the offering. And uh, it's part of, part of our, every Sunday morning and sometimes other days too, our expression of our love and commitment to the Lord. So if I can invite the ushers to come forward at this time. So. Uh, we pray over the um, offering. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, in Christ's name, we, we thank you that we can serve you different ways. And Lord, as we are expressing our love and commitment for this church, through our tithing and offering, Lord, um, may it increase your kingdom, kingdom, kingdom enterprise through this church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
seated. Thank you. We have several high school graduates here. I don't know how many we have, but let me start calling upon these names. Catherine Ella Hausen is Catherine here. I thought I saw her. If you can come forward, we want to introduce you. Uh, at this time, Bethany Sills. Bethany's here. I know she's here. Madeline Lumpkins. I think I saw her there. Yeah, come forward. And then local, uh, Logan Turner. Is Logan here? Not here. What about Kendall? Kendall wasn't here. Kendall didn't make it. Okay. Well, then we have also um, some folks who uh, graduated from the college. Let me just recognize these people. Alex Mundane being celebrated a few times, and he's in Tennessee, am I right? He's in Tennessee. We want to uh, remember Alex and for his great accomplishments for graduating uh, from the college. Uh, Brandon Turner, is he happened to be here at this time? We want to recognize him as well after graduating from college. And then Johanna Cosney, who uh, did receive um, uh, her postgraduate uh, uh, certification in, in accounting, I think, from EKU. Come over here, Johanna. We want to uh, uh, thank you as well. I don't think we give you a present, Johanna, because you already graduated. But we want to uh, remember. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't go back. Just stay here. But uh, here they are, and we are going to have you a little present here. It's not just a little, it's a pretty big present, actually. Namely, uh, I tried to figure out where is Catherine's. Uh, it's you are the first one here. Okay, let's see. I'm sorry, I forgot it, your present. This one right here. And then we have Bedne. I thought I got yours. Should have put this in better order, I guess. It's like a waiting for your Christmas present. Let's make you more excited. Okay. I think Bethany, I got yours here. And then we have Madeline, I have only three left, so I shouldn't have any problem to find this one. Okay, there you go. So what this, pre and, and what this present is, it is a Bible. I know you are going to get lots of presents, maybe more than you thought, lots of presents, all kinds of presents. Uh, but I believe what the church needs to be, you need to be reminded by the church by the love and faith for you, but also the basics of any life, which is God's presence in your life. So um, you've been given thousands of opportunities because you are young. You have all the doors open for you. Good doors, good door, all the good doors are open for you. So uh, what we do this morning, we are praying that um, God will provide you and lead you and guide you to find that right, exactly right door for you. And uh, we ask in protection for you. Uh, we ask in all the possible blessings that you can ever have uh, to come upon you. But the biggest blessing in your life is your personal relations with Jesus Christ. That's the foundation. So if you keep on building on that, everything else will work out as well. But uh, that's the reminder for you. And then, um, of course, high school graduation doesn't mean that you graduate from the church. You never graduate from the church. So I try to remind every time when somebody graduates from high school, this, this doesn't mean that you graduated from the church, because that's not what, what it is. And also, Johanna, we, we are so thankful that you were able to uh, uh, get uh, one more certification and credential uh, to build up your uh, career and your work at the college, wherever you end up working. 
So we are thankful that uh, you were able to do that. So if you don't mind, we want to uh, kind of surround you all with our blessings and prayers this morning. And please join with me as we pray. There is also a written prayer in the bulletin. Um, I would like to be more inspirational this morning than just, just praying the uh, written prayer. I would like to pray from my heart for you, okay? And then uh, the church will join and we bless you in Jesus' name. Dear Heavenly Father, <clears throat> we pray for these young people this morning. Lord, we pray from our heart uh, for you to guide them and protect them. Lord, you have given each and every one of them a purpose that is way beyond what we can understand and comprehend. It is their calling to be faithful disciples in this world. It is the calling that you have given for each and every one of them before they were born to be true followers of Jesus Christ in this world. Lord, you have blessed them with, with so many different talents and gifts. And now there are lots of opportunities open, open doors to extend their studies and <clears throat> find their career and establish their life. Lord, but we ask your guidance. We ask your blessings. We ask your protection for them. And as they leave this place of celebration today, and as they are discerning <clears throat> what the right path and track and, and, and plan for their life be, Holy Spirit, we ask you to be their advisor, their counselor, their teacher, so that they will know that this is the way for me. May their life be happy after this graduation, <clears throat> and may they find lots of joy for their accomplishments this morning and uh, after the, at their graduation. So in your wonderful name, Savior Jesus Christ, we pray and we thank. Amen. Congratulations. We continue our prayer time, uh, praying for several church family members who are introduced here on the prayer list in your bulletins, on back of your bulletins. Please uh, notice <clears throat> who they are. Uh, we send prayer chain messages just about every day to remind our church family about people who need prayers. Maybe some of you here need, need prayer. Maybe that's why you came. To, came to church this morning. And then there are unspoken matters, matters that we don't feel comfortable sharing with anybody, <clears throat> matters that only God knows and you know. So we pray for all those as well. So please join with me as we go back to the Lord by praying for these several church family members and praying for you all here in the sanctuary and also the ones at home who are worshiping at home with us. We pray with you this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, sometimes we feel that there are so many concerns for us to, <clears throat> to pray for. And Lord, we know that there are not too many for you. <clears throat> so come Holy Spirit, come upon our prayers for our church family members, our friends who are ill. Place your healing hand upon them. May they feel your healing presence as we pray this morning. May they feel that, Lord Jesus, you are with them. We pray for those who are weak, give them strength. And we pray for those, for us all who have sinned, give us forgiveness. Forgive us. We keep on praying for, we continue our prayers for our younger generation who graduated or who will be graduating. We thank you, Lord, for their wonderful, wonderful life that you have given. And we continue our prayers for their best. 
Jesus, we pray together as disciples always pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you have to say to us today. Amen. My first reading is from Psalm 67. If you would like to look in the Pew Bible, it's on page 714. I like how it's introduced in this Common English Bible version. It says, for the music leader with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. Let God grant us grace and bless us. Let God make his face shine upon us so that your way becomes known on earth, so that your salvation becomes known among all nations. Let the people thank you, God. Let all the people thank you. Let the people celebrate and shout with joy because you judge the nations fairly and guide all nations on the earth. Let the people thank you, God. Let the people thank you. The earth has yielded its harvest. God blesses us. Our God blesses us. Let God continue to bless us. Let the far ends of the earth honor him. From the New Testament, Acts chapter 16, verses 9 to 15, in the Pew Bible on page 1348. A vision of a man from Macedonia came to Paul during the night. He stood urging Paul, come over to Macedonia and help us. Immediately after he saw the vision, we prepared to leave for the province of Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We sailed from Troas straight for Samothrace and came to Neapolis the following day. From there we went to Philippi, a city of Macedonia's first district and a Roman colony. We stayed in that city several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the riverbank where we thought there might be a place for prayer. We sat down and began to talk with the women who had gathered. One of those women was Lydia, a Gentile, God worshiper, from the city of Thyatira, a dealer in purple cloth. As she listened, the Lord enabled her to embrace Paul's message. Once she and her household were baptized, she urged, now that you have decided that I am a believer in the Lord, Come and stay in my house. And she persuaded us. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. This is Luke chapter 18, verses 1 through 8, in the Pew Bible, page 1275. Jesus was telling them a parable about their need to pray continuously and not to be discouraged. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him asking, Give me justice in this case against my adversary. For a while he refused, but finally said to himself, I do not fear God or respect people, but I will give this widow justice because she keeps bothering me. Otherwise there will be no end to her coming here and embarrassing me. The Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Won't God provide justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? 
Will he be slow to help them? I tell you, he will give them justice quickly. But when the Son of Man comes, will he find faithfulness on the earth? The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Quieta, for the beautiful, beautiful song. Our sermon, or my sermon, is titled, uh, Your Faith is Essential. And the story before us comes from the Gospel of Luke. I know you have heard this many times, but something about these parables, biblical narratives that Jesus says that you thought that you got it all one time and then you read it again and you go back again and you realize that there is something that you missed last time. Now that is Holy Spirit speaking to you. 
bringing you different perspective into the reading. And it happens every time to me. Even the most common readings in the Bible, for example, Luke 3, I mean, excuse me, uh, John 3.16. If I was to call you middle of night and say, what does John 3.16 say? You said, Pastor, I memorized that since I was four years old. And you repeat it, and then you realize that, by the way, uh, I must have missed something there. Anyway, this story is a little bit different. First of all, because the, it's a, it's a, it, could, it could happen in every town, even today, as we speak. So, through this story, Jesus tells us, communicates us, teaches us about how essential your faith is. How important it is that you have faith. And young people, especially this morning, the ones who are graduating, your faith as well is essential. Now Jesus is telling about, about the judge, about a judge in a certain town. So it could be any town, even in Berea, Kentucky. This judge was no good, we can say. This judge gave a testimony about himself. He says, I am the man who neither fear God nor fear about people. And this was also Jesus' testimony about this man. But there's a widow in that town. A widow of the city came to him repeatedly again and again, came before that judge saying, Give me justice in this dispute with my enemy. We don't know what the dispute was, what the struggle was, but he wanted this, 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 uh, this lady, she wanted justice in her struggle. And the judge keep on ignoring her for a while at least. But then finally he said, according to the story to himself, well, I don't fear God or care about people. So if you have been given authority over people to rule over, to practice law, practice the law and practice justice, and you don't care, you don't believe in God and you don't care for people, so it's a fair to say that he's no good. I hope we don't have judge in this town like him or any town. But then Jesus says, but this woman keep on coming back to this judge. Up to the point that this judge said, well, she's, she's driving me crazy. Literally what the New Living Translation says. By coming back to me again and again and again and again. So, because of that, even or despite I am not really, I don't really care about her situation. And I don't care what God might be planning for her. What I'm going to do, I'm going to see that she gets justice. Because she's wearing me out with her constant requests. So this was the example, the metaphor Jesus uses to teach us something very important. And then Jesus says, learn, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Learn a lesson. Even he rendered it a just decision in the end after he did do something good for that lady. So don't you think God will surely give justice to his chosen people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? And here's the point. I tell you, Jesus saying, he will grant justice to them quickly. So God is not like that unjust judge. 
but God will act and grant justice to them quickly. But here's the point, and this is what we want to think about this morning. But when the Son of Man comes, or when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on earth, on the earth, who have faith? The, here is what, where Jesus is referring himself, calling himself the Son of Man. He's talking about his second coming, when he returned, when he returned back to his church, when he come back into this world at his second coming called Parousia. So he's not saying, when I possibly come back, I wonder if I happen to come back, if there happened to be somebody with faith. No, he says, when, listen to this, when the Son of Man returns, talking about his second coming, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Now, no wonder in this parable, <clears throat> Jesus is telling us that the faith is essential. If Jesus came back today, how many people of faith would he find? What, what do you think? Remember what he says, when I, this is the other translation, when I, the Son of Man, return, how many will I find on earth who have faith? Now, about us today and the part of this generation, we may call it postmodernism. We live in an increasingly faithless world. Um, it is secular world of shifting values and growing ecocentrism. It is another word for self-centeredness. Self if Jesus came back today, how many people of faith would he find? And putting it more personal, would Jesus find me or you being faithful to him and to the Lord? Now, everything about us is based on our faith, if we call ourselves Christians. Even our salvation is based on faith, faith in Jesus Christ by grace. We talk about the Lord of the church, but we don't see him visibly. We know he is here. We hear his voice through the word. We feel he even feel his presence through the presence of the Holy Spirit. But when you say, I saw Jesus, somebody may put question mark on that, that where did you see him? Well, I, I saw him through the eyes of my faith. He was there in, this morning in the church. Because even you did not see him, as Apostle John says, you knew you were assured, you were certain that Jesus was there as he's here this morning. Because you are connecting with him through your faith. Salvation comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Your service, your giving, your self-giving, your, your, your sacrifices for the ministry, for the church, your time giving, your commitments, it's by faith. Even getting justice in this world as a Christian Believers, we believe it comes through faith. Now, when we advertise our services, we can say that, unfortunately, this Sunday, Jesus was way too busy to be with us. But wait till next Sunday, he might be with us. No, we know he is with us every Sunday. And not just on Sundays, but he's with us every single day, every single moment, every single minute. He's with us. Why we know it? Through our faith. So faith is essential for Christian believer. Even up to the point that the writer of the book of Hebrews, in the chapter 11, verse 6, he says, the word says, without faith it is impossible to please God. The other translation says, being acceptable to God. 
impossible without faith. So faith is essential. No wonder Jesus says, when I come back, when I return to my church at Parousia, at the second coming, I wonder if I find people with faith, which is faithful people. The Bible makes it clear that God is looking for faithful people. I was just reading this morning, additional reading for this homily from the Second Chronicles 16.9. It says, For the eye of the Lord searched back and forth across the whole earth, earth excuse me, looking for people whose hearts are perfect toward him so that he can so that he can show his great power in helping them. So God is searching back and forth according to the scripture, searching if there were faithful people. Why? So that he can show his great power in helping them. In helping them. So, I take this is an extra, this is an extra blessing. After all what he has provided us on the cross of Calvary by dying for our, or for our sins, he's actively searching, going back and forth across the whole earth, whole, excuse me, whole earth, looking for people whose hearts are perfect toward him, so that he can help them. So, God is seeking faithful people. God is seeking faithful people. This is why your faith is essential because that makes you a Christian. That makes you an object for God's empowering, empowering work, more work for you, to help you. So why is God seeking faithful people? Because he wants to sow his love through his great power in the life of faithful people. That is what he wants. Our faith is the key to unlocking his blessings in our lives. Remember what Jesus says in Matthew 9, 29. Listen to this. And you may want to read it at home when you get home. According to your faith... Will it be done to you? According to your faith. That's something, isn't it? According to your faith, will it be done to you? So faith, through faith, I am connecting with the Lord. According, Jesus says, to my faith, it will be done to me and done to you. This means that God wants to pour blessings into all areas of your life according to your faith. Faith is relationship with Jesus Christ. Faith is not just the material you pull in when you need, and the more you appeal, the more people, the more man or woman of faith you are. Faith is not separate your daily relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? Faith is relational. Faith is your relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ. You can't have faith apart from him. Your relationship with your spouse or with your dear friend is based on your relationship with him. It's not just what you think about him, but it's based on your relationship with him. If you say you love your spouse and you never spend time with him, you never talk to him. You never hang, ar hang around with him. You never do anything with him or with her. How much faith you have in him. How much you know him. Very little. So your faith is not apart or separate from your, from your personal relation with Jesus Christ, but it is one thing. Faith is not material. 
it is not additional item to add on your ordinary relationship with the, with the, with the Lord. But it is the same thing. It is the same thing. Let me put it this way. The more Christ you have, the more vital your relations with the Lord is, the more faithful person you are. The more available you are for, for the Lord and His ministry and for all, that he, for all the plans He has for you. I think one way to understand what faith is, is to read the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews. The first verse says, in this very chapter, it says, listen to this. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. Faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. How many things you can see about tomorrow, about next year, about next minute? Zero. But you have reason to believe that there's going to be something, and hopefully something good, because you are connecting with your future by your faith, which is, as the apostle says, faith is the confidence that what we see what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. That's the nature of your faith. But don't you ever believe that your faith is separated from your relationship with the source of faith, which is Jesus Christ. Now, it was Jesus who says, when the Son of Man, referring to himself, when he returns, and he will return, and thank you, Jesus, hopefully it happens soon. Will I find faithful people? People who are serving me, connecting with me, living with me, living by their faith, living by their relationship with me. Sadly to say, but the way I read Jesus' word here in this chapter Faithful people who really trust God and live for Christ day in, day out, seems to be hard to find. Now, Jesus wouldn't be wondering whether there will be faithful people at his coming if he didn't believe that there are, unfortunately, people who don't have faith in him. Again, Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Many a man claims to have unfailing love, but a faithful man who can find. Now, Proverbs are wisdom readings. They are wisdom readings. If you want to gain rich wisdom, read Proverbs and Psalms too. Psalms too. This same verse is translated in the today's English version. It says, everyone talks about how loyal and faithful he is, but just try to find someone who really is. No wonder Jesus was questioning that. Psalm 50, 53 says, God looks down from heaven at people to see if there, is any, if there are any who are wise, any who worship him, but they, they have all turned away, they all are equally bad. Not a one of them does what is right, not a single one. That is the, the reality of sin in the world. So through faith, we are connecting to the source of faith, and Jesus says, faith is essential. But the key to many blessings in your life and all the blessings in your life is through your faith. After all, your faith is the key for godly life and for many blessings in your life. So don't say when somebody says how much faith you have, don't say it don't matter, God covers it for me. 
because that's not what Jesus is saying here. I was attending Christian conference way several years ago back in Helsinki, and there's a little panel, and a few pastors were invited to answer to a few questions, and I talked to somebody who was leading that panel. I said, don't ask difficult questions from me because I may not be able to answer. There are lots of difficult questions to ask about Bible and about Christian faith. Don't say it is easy. So he said, no, I have such easy questions today. And one question he asked, tell me what is faith to you? What is faith to you? That was a big question for a young preacher at that time. And I said, with the best knowledge I have, to me, faith is my relationship with Jesus Christ. And everything else is just a consequence of that. I don't have faith if it hasn't been given to me. I just don't have faith if, if it was, was not given to me. So faith is a gift based on your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not apart from Christ, but it is who Christ is. The greater your faith is, the greater our faith is, we have reason to believe that more blessings and victories we experience because the Lord is leading and guiding us. The Bible says, Apostle John says, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, world, even our faith. Who is that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And there it is. So going back to our question, or our theme today, or topic, your faith is essential, is the answer itself. Your faith is essential. You've been known and you've been recognized as a Christian believer by your faith. By your faith, you act upon your faith, and through your faith and by your faith, you serve the Lord as a Christian believer. Something practical. I remember my parents were people of faith. They didn't brag on their faith, but I can see faith every day in our life. I grew up on the farm in the northwest of Finland, and I have told many times we were eight children. My parents were farmers, and we had a farm. They still have it. My brother is running it. It was early 1970s when my parents decided to build a new house, new house for us. Our old farmhouse was over 100 years old. It was good looking, but considering the Finnish winters, it was cold, it was just old. It, was old. it took, would take too much to fix it up and to make it more, more modern for, for, for the needs of the family. So my parents decided to go ahead and start building a new house. Now, there had been two very bad years for the farmers, two, three years, past years. Very bad years. Didn't make much money. Expenses running, loans were running. Didn't make much money. But my parents had decided to start building that house. And it wasn't just a one time around the dinner table when we discussed about it and there were plans and they were talking about it. And my mother was firm believer that we need to start. We got to start now. We, not to st we need to get it started now. My father was a little bit slow. He said, I don't know how in the world we are able to do it. But anyway, even after two or three year disappointments, for the income, they decided to go ahead and start. They decided to build the foundation first, to lay the foundation first one summer. And they said, okay, after that, we just cover it for the winter, and we hopefully will have a better year next year, so maybe we are able to continue that building site, which they did. They did. And that was a big call for them, and I'd say they were exercising their faith 
because they didn't see really what's going to happen. Now, my parents had discussed with the banker, and he had barely approved their plan. It was a long-time banker in the community, and they are great people. They know the community. They know how to work with these farmers and other people there. They know them well, and they are good people. They're good people. Now, he said, knowing you, I approve it, but I am just afraid that you are going to go under. I don't want you to go under. My parents said, we believe we are going to make it, and we need to start it. So they started. And lots of things. We can go all day long to discuss about it. But then finally, the next year, for the farmers were better, and the following year were a little bit better. So they start getting income in to cover the bills. Of course, they had a big mortgage for the house. But they finally got the building. It's a beautiful big house. house. Took two years to build it. And then when we have the dedication, and the neighbors and families, and, 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 and the banker, of course, among the first ones walking, uh, I remember always that conversation around the coffee table when this banker saw appreciation of my parents and he said, I have to say that I've been in this community for a long time. By the time when you share your plans and you told about your plans to start building and knowing your financial situation, <clears throat> I was pretty sure that it's not going to happen. But I didn't have cuts to deny you because you've been faithful customers for us. And I wanted to do all I can to help you out. But now since I, after I know that you made it, I don't know how in the world you made it happen. I don't have no answer. But you are seemingly doing well. And I remember my, my parents said, it is the faith. It is the faith that put us through. It is the faith. And that has brought me realism as a Christian minister and pastor what faith truly is. It is really your relationship with Jesus Christ putting in action through everyday life. Making miracles through your action. It is not throwing big statements about your faith. It has nothing to do with faith actually. But your faith is your everyday relationship with your Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing what the writer of the book of Hebrews says, faith is the confidence. I've never seen anybody having so much confidence as my parents had. The pockets were empty and bad, two bad years behind. And they say, but there's confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. And that is what faith is all about. Amen? Amen? That is what faith is all about. So I'm calling upon you and calling and encouraging you as a Christian believers, whatever you are doing in the life of your church, in the life of what you're doing, exercise your faith, exercise your relationship with Almighty God through Jesus Christ. It's going to be okay. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we know our faith is essential in connecting with our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. It is essential when it comes to our salvation, our service, our future plans, our actions, our work, and most ordinary work and things that we do every day, it's about our faith. Come Holy Spirit, come and continue teaching and preaching us about this wonderful, wonderful gift of faith that has been given to us as we call ourselves self-Christian believers, followers of Jesus Christ in this dark world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
I invite you to please stand as we sing together, Victory in Jesus. Let us stand. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today here at church. As you go back to your mission field, please recognize all these blessings, flowers that God has decorated our ways as these arrangements here on the altar. They are the blessings that God wants us to remember this time of year. And remember your faith is essential for you. So please open your hearts for the blessing and benediction. My dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. We pray this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.